Oh yeah, we uncovered the corporations bring back child labor in America. Hell fucking yeah, boys. Hell yeah, that's how we bring back the economy. That's how we make America great again. That's right. Put the kids back in the mines. What is it on? Oh, I'm gonna pass on that. That's Iowa State Senator Jason Schultz. He's the sponsor of the most dramatic rollback of child labor protections in the nation. Wow. Even if he doesn't want to talk about it. Nothing no, about I'm going to pass on that. I'm just kind of stepping back on that one. I'm, I'm going to not get into any conversations. I'm going to stay away from that. Well, the whenever they keep asking him the same question and he says no, it just reminds me of like whenever you keep interacting with the Stormwind Guard and they say King's Honor, friend, you know, light be with you. Like, it just over and over. It's like NPC dialogue, and you're, like, eventually going to exist all, uh, exhaust all of them. Oh, you might find out later why. Oh. <laughs> there you go. There's your tease. Senator Schultz is clearly proud of his work, but as our investigation will show you, he's just one part of a shadowy national effort funded by big corporations and PACs to roll back child labor laws that have been in place since the 1930s. All right. Four states are considering changes to child labor laws as they try to fill jobs. Maine and Michigan lowered the required age to serve alcohol. New Jersey raised... Jesus. Like, I, I mean, I, like, maybe I'm crazy, but I would rather you put the kids back in the mines than you put them in the bars. There's no reason to lower the age of drinking alcohol. You know what I think they should make the minimum age for drinking alcohol? 200 years old. If you make it that long, maybe it's okay. I don't drink. I'm joking, by the way. I'm not going to, I would not make alcohol illegal if I could. I, I don't drink. I'm not a fan of drinking. Oh, to serve? Oh, serve alcohol. I got it. I understand now. Oh, man. I did this in school a lot, too, where I would read it wrong the limit on the number of hours teens can work over the summer. In Minnesota, a new bill would allow 16 and 17 year olds to work construction jobs. In Iowa, proposed wait, wait, law hold up. bill would 14 and 15 year olds in meat packing plants. I, mean, I think my dad worked in a slaughterhouse whenever he was like 14, some shit. I mean, it is what it is. Raise limit on hours during school year, protect business from life. See that this is the important part, right? Because like he said, people get their finger cut off all the time. So it's like, you know, you don't want to have a situation where kid gets his finger cut off. He sues the he sues the company. That can't happen. Allow 16 and 17 year olds to work construction jobs. In Iowa, proposed law would let 14 and 15 year olds work certain jobs in meat packing plants. Jesus. The Iowa bill takes child labor law rollbacks to the next level. Think kids in ultra dangerous meat packing plants. There facilities, they are. High volume Aren't they happy? bottling plants and working for cheap on the searing hot ovens of fast food chains yeah. like McDonald's for 30 plus hours a week. No, for real. Iowa Republicans want to allow kids between the ages of 14 to 17 to work in incredibly dangerous, often- Well, it's smart to have the kids work in the dangerous places because the kids are stupid and they don't know it's dangerous. So they won't want more money. You gotta, you gotta think, think too, you gotta think, think down the field. Deadly workplaces. Places like construction sites where more than 5,000 workers died last year. As uh -huh. it's set up now, there would be virtually no restrictions. The job would just have to be part of an education program, something right. that the company could invent itself. It's true that more than a third of teenagers across the U.S. worked summer jobs in 2021, but serving ice cream isn't exactly the same as working in building demolition. Yep. So why would lawmakers... Yep, my dad, uh, my, my dad worked for a safe company whenever he was like 14, and uh, he had a safe go through a wall. He talks, uh, apparently, like, uh, everybody in, uh, in, like, the whole block watched it happen. Yep, they watched it, went right through the fucking wall. Totally fucked it up. So I don't know if this is going to pay off for these companies in the long run. Because one of the things about kids is they're stupid. And this is going to be a problem whenever you have kids doing jobs that something could go wrong with like theoretically uh you know you could just have a kid serves ice cream oh it's chocolate and not vanilla nobody dies but you have something like this 
it's a totally different situation. Put kids who are just finishing middle school mm -hmm. into such dangerous yeah, situations. Yeah, there you go. Here's middle what Rep school. Deo, the house sponsor of the bill, says. Right now, kids can be out till 10 o'clock if they're out for a sport or a school activity. And so, why why are they? Wait, not they're out. What, what, bro? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, we used to be out until like fucking three in the morning. Like, what do you what do you mean, man? What do you mean, Dave? Yeah, I, I, well, I mean, it makes sense, right? You look at it from his perspective. Uh, you know, the kid's the the kid is he's out of the house, so he might as well be working in the coal mine. I mean, it's just like, I mean, he's already he's not in the house. He's, I mean, he's halfway there to begin with. Well, to be able to work until, say, for example, nine o'clock. Yeah, it's it's An better. An expert we spoke to firmly disagreed. It's a bizarre argument to argue that playing team sports is akin to working in a, you know, in a factory or some other dangerous environment. We, we like kids not to work more than 20 hours a week because that's... Well, the, the reason why it's different is because it doesn't fucking matter if a kid drops a football. But if a kid drops a knife, that could be a situation. It's kind of a, a cutoff for, for damage that's done to them educationally. Mm-hmm. Okay, so why are lawmakers actually doing this? The bill was uh, really spearheaded by the Restaurant Association. Yeah, I bet it um, was. We sort of well, I'm sure it's because the Restaurant Association wants to pay them a livable wage. Yeah. That makes came sense. Along. We were asked to be, uh, we were invited to come along. That's Brad Epperly, a lobbyist who works for big corporate clients like the Iowa Grocery Industry Association. Uh -huh. He's outright admitting to us that the Iowa Restaurant Association was the driving force behind this bill. Yeah. They're an affiliate of the National Restaurant Association, a trade That's group the that way that we do things here. Now, why is it the way we do things? Money. That represents some of the biggest names in fast food, like Burger King and Taco Bell. Burger they King also is lobby for like corporations King like PepsiCo and, Taco and Cisco. Bell. And from one look at their newsletter from this time last year, you can tell they've been hard at work spreading the gospel about the mm -hmm. benefits of young labor. The hands-on internship at the slaughterhouse is their big priority this year, but we can't give them all the credit. Yeah. This child labor law rollback originated at a meeting of the Iowa Workforce Development Board, which is overseen by Governor Kim Reynolds. Most of its members are corporate CEOs and lobbyists, and they meet up several times a year to come up with new policies. This bill was a product of a meeting in November. The WDB is chaired by Jay Iverson, executive officer of the Association of Iowa Builders, hence the emphasis on kids using bandsaws on work sites. I remember, like, we used to use bandsaws in, like, middle school. And I remember if you fucked around on the bandsaw, like, our teacher was, a like, a veteran of, like, the Korean War or something like that. And he said, if, if, if bro, if you do anything, like, if you don't call him sir, you're kicked out of the class. Like, that was it. And, like, nobody ever messed anything up. And I couldn't imagine that, like, one of these companies is going to be uh, that strict. I bet they probably don't give a fuck even nearly as much because they're trying to make money. His job was to make sure people learned how to use a fucking bandsaw. Lobbyists from the Iowa Association of Business and Industry are well represented on the board, which gives member corporations... Now, like to be fair, there are bandsaws nowadays that can detect whether your hand goes into the bandsaw and it can stop so fast that it will not even break the skin even if you put your finger in the bandsaw. That technology is available, and I can guarantee you it's probably not at the slaughterhouses that they're fucking having kids go to. So, like, it's there. Well, I mean, obviously they don't have it, right? But, like, it's theoretical, right? I mean, yeah, we could save the kids' fingers, but, I mean, it would cost a lot of money, right? And it's, like, a whole thing, and it's not a bandsaw. I thought I saw one for a bandsaw. I saw a circular saw. Is there not a bandsaw one? It's expensive. Um, yeah, yeah, it's expensive. At the table. And of course, no race to the bottom would be complete without the Coke funded Americans for Prosperity and Opportunity Solutions Network yep. also lobbying on the bill. Given their obvious enthusiasm. It's so crazy to me that these dudes can drop. Look at this here. Like, they, sp they gave this woman $8,000 and she's towing the line 
for these two fucks. No, 168 is all of the governors. It's all of the people here. They only gave her eight grand. How is it that there are 17 year old Fortnite pros that exercise more ethical judgment in not showing a raid shadow legend sponsorship on their live stream than the state governor, state fucking governor taking $8,000 just to fucking shit to put the kids back in a fucking slaughterhouse. Are you kidding me? It's, it's amazing! Wow! ...an Opportunity Solutions Network also lobbying on the bill. Given their obvious enthusiasm, we tried to get some of these lobbyists to talk to us about the many benefits of child labor. I'm sure you'll find plenty of people that are willing to talk to that. I'll talk to him. Yeah, yeah I gotta, he's gotta go. But they were a bit shy to take credit. Yeah, he's got to go. The next part of the bill was clearly written for the Iowa Restaurant Association, Hotel and Lodging Bro, Association. Three thousand five hundred dollars. Are you kidding? Jesus! No, this one. No, the the, the other one was fifteen k. This is three point. Oh my! Like you put all that together, it's like twenty grand. You're going to sell us out for like 20 grand? Get the fuck out of here. Have some self-respect. Ask for millions of dollars. At least extort them for more money before you fuck us for it. And National Bureau of Independent Businesses, the state leaders in low-wage jobs. It would allow 14-year-olds to work in giant freezing meat lockers and raise their mandatory clock-out time from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and then 11 p.m. in the summer. The research that has been done has found pretty clearly that 20 hours is kind of a cutoff. And when kids work more than that during the school week, their grades, their grades start to plummet. Mm -hmm and their school completion That's rate. crazy. Like, my grades plummeted, and I worked zero hours a week. So I can only imagine if you had a job at the same time, this would be, wow, that would be bad. It starts to plummet. Many businesses, like retail, restaurants, and fast food joints, love to hire kids because they'll... Because they'll take a lower paycheck, they're stupid, and they're easier to manipulate. Take a lower paycheck. Yep. If they can stay at work even longer, places like McDonald's, which loves hiring kids, Absolutely. don't even need to worry about hiring adults who can fill those jobs. Little That's right. And y you know what? McDonald's is going to hire a 14-year-old because a 14-year-old isn't going to be like, you know what? I think these wages are a bit low. Maybe we need a union. Guess what? They don't teach what unions are until 12th grade. So you've got at least three years, three golden years, that this kid can just enjoy his job before he learns all of this, like, fucking communist propaganda about, like, unions and labor laws and fucking just bullshit like that. Alone paying them living wages. Children's brains are not fully developed, especially... Yeah, I can't wait to have some... Fun. Like, this is the thing. I go to McDonald's, and these 16-year-olds, 15-year-olds are working at McDonald's. They don't even... They don't even wear the uniform, which, like, I don't care. I do the same thing. They don't even talk to me. They're like, hey, you drink? I'm like, yeah. Oh, uh, the receipt? And I'm like, no. And they give me the receipt. I'm like, all right, see ya. And that's it. I don't want this kid working at a slaughterhouse. He's going to cut his fucking arm off. They don't wash their hands. Well, they don't wash their hands because if they wash their hands, they get their phone wet. And like, so like, whenever you pull up to the window, they're like, oh, fuck, I got to get off my phone again. There's all these annoying fucking customers showing up at my fucking, at my fucking employment. This is the worst of the brain that exercises caution that tell, you know, tells a person that, oh, this is dangerous, I might get hurt. That part of the brain is just not quite there yet. And it doesn't really fully develop until the early or, or mid 20s. The bill would also let 16 and 17 year olds handle alcohol on the job. No, oh, that's good. Effectively puts them in pubs and bars with intoxicated adults. No, oh, that sounds, wow, what a good idea. That sounds great. Uh-huh. 
Really, really smart, bro. Over in Iowa, they've got some real good old boys making decisions. What could go wrong? Consider these all big wins for BlackRock, Vanguard, Wellington, JP Morgan, Fidelity. Those yeah. Wall Street titans naturally own big stakes in the multinational food distribution powerhouses Cisco and Performance Food Service, two of the top donors to the Iowa Restaurant Association. Truly the voice of small business. Oh, yeah. But there's one company that benefits more over any other. Hy-Vee, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. Hy-Vee oh, is one good. of the biggest employers in Iowa and one of its most prolific violators of child labor law. Every few years, a new report seems to come out about all the miners unlawfully working for them. Since 2000, Hy-Vee has been fined over $700,000. If the punishment for a crime is merely a fine, then that crime only exists for the lower class. You know where that came from? Final Fantasy. What about my kid my grandma my phone you just bought you whenever you just get cooking? Well, listen to this. My, I went to fucking Chipotle, and so I went there. This, no, it was two different times. So apparently the guy there was the manager now he's like, are you like a streamer or some shit? Because the kids here always talk about you whenever you come in. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, that's crazy. And I'm like, yep. And he's like, you want a drink? I'm like, yeah. I'm going to get a large drink. And that was the end of the conversation. So a week or two before then, about five Chipotle visits before then, um, I went there, it was like 9, 10, 9.30. I close at 10. Like, I mean, 9, 10, and then it would be 9, 11 after that, right? Well, bad example, but you know what I mean. And they told me that they were closed. And do you want to know why they were closed? Is because seven of them were sitting in a little circle. And they, they had like a beat on, and they were like freestyling with each other, and they had shut down the store. <laughs> They said, we close. We, we don't have time to give you food. And it was like, I would be so mad. But like, I would have done the exact same thing. I would have done the exact, what they have beat up. Yes. Yeah, they're just sitting there like listening to fucking instrumentals and rapping. Yeah, it's like, whatever. I'm like, yeah, all right, whatever. I'll see y'all later. So it's like you have kids working at a company and you're going to have some problems. Also, let's do a little bit of math here. 32 records, $700,000. So that means that each one of these costs them, like, I don't know, what's the fucking math on this? Like less than 20 grand each time they fuck this up? H how do you only lose 20 grand whenever you accidentally hire a kid? 20, 25, yeah, so there you go. That's so dumb. For more than it's three nothing. labor law yeah. violations, including a big fine last year for safety violations. A big, get the fuck out of here, a big fine. That's nothing. But as much as they forked over to OSHA, Hy-Vee has been even more generous to Kim Reynolds and I. Oh, wow, $71,000. Okay, that's still less than a gambling sponsorship at stake. People still don't do steak. I mean, again, how is it that this fucking... She's a career politician. And she is selling out for less than people that play video games for... A, this is so sad. It's And look at Shannon here. Shannon's, Shannon's finessing us for four fucking thousand dollars. And this is, again, it's over 10 years. She got $4,000 over 10 years. That is sad. Republicans shelling out over $815,000 over the last decade alone. Reynolds even kicked off her 2018 campaign for governor at a high V and appeared on their bespoke talk show. 
hy V is a great example of a phenomenal Absolutely. employer. They put one of our largest... Maybe she's working an extra shift there so she can make the money back. Maybe that's what it is, guys. I think it, it all starts to make sense. She's strapped for cash. Employers in the state of, of Iowa, they're in small communities all across this great state, and one of the major employers in these small Holy communities. Fuck. So uh, very, very grateful to that helpful smile in every aisle. Yeah. <laughs> it's unclear That's how nice. many kids were working there at the time, but hy V is just one of many corporations that are now regularly being caught violating child labor. I think, I mean, mistakes happen. It's like an internet, it's a national corporation, like a mistake happens, right? Like, okay, or some fucking dipshit that like works somewhere else. Yeah, sure, it happens. But like, you're talking 32 fucking times? 32, how, bro, come on. 32, that's, that's not a mistake, bro. That's a habit. For a bill pitched as a cure for so-called worker shortages in Iowa, where the minimum uh -huh. wage is still $7.25, and so many other states, the reality is damning. You've seen the headlines, yeah. including the huge recent expose in the New York Times about the proliferation of child labor. Since the Oh, God. Of course, right? Well, let me read this real quick. The huge Migrant children, brutal jobs. Bro, I'm so sick of this shit. Like, I, I, I really hate this philosophy that some people fucking have that the way to solve labor problems is to import third world people and use them as a slave class. Can we please leave this in the 1800s? Please, can we stop this shit? It's so annoying. It's, it worked for the Romans? Yeah, I know. Of course it did. Of course. God damn an expose in the New York Times about the prime capitalism it's not though the thing is that it's actually not capitalism because these people are not working in a free market the reason why they're hot the first thing that you do in a capitalist environment is you make it not capitalist you immediately shut that down because in a capitalist environment, in a free market, you can lose. Well, you don't want to lose, do you? That's why you price fix. That's why you talk to other people behind the scenes. That's why you do all the things that we have laws against. See? That's how... That, that, that's the thing. Not true capitalism, guys. Well, what I'm saying is that I, I don't think that we really need to make a... You know, you know, is this real true capitalism? Obviously, importing people, I don't care... Like, people that were socialists did this shit, too. Everybody does this because it's ch it's cheap. It doesn't matter if you're capitalists or socialists. There's cheap fucks and, and, and greedy fucks everywhere. People always have these uh, you know, terms that they want to use. This is your hobby horse. Oh, this is the bad term. This is the good term. Bro, there's bad people and good people. Child labor. That's annoying. Since the pandemic began, violations have exploded and were up by 37% last oh, of year. Course. Packer Sanitation it's Services from yeah. Dikea in Alabama. Blackstone owned PSSI, a sanitation company with systemic violations. Mm -hmm. Instead of cracking down, states are lining up to legalize the practice. Well, it makes sense, right? Because like they have to deal with all these fines, figuring out like these companies. Like, oh God, it's another one's breaking the law. Oh, how can we solve this? Let's get rid of the law. There it is. Now we don't need to worry about it. 10 over the past two years alone. It's much the same story in Arkansas, Ohio, and Wisconsin. Big donations by big corporations are leading to laws that put kids at risk in order to save a few bucks. That's right. The intention is written in plain English. The original version of the Iowa bill called for total corporate immunity if a kid got injured at a dangerous workplace. Lawmakers were forced to scrub that last part, but employers will still avoid liability if a kid gets into an accident while driving home after working late into the night. Exploit a kid's cheap labor, nope. then send them packing, and no responsibility when there are consequences. It should go without saying, but such a textbook example of corporate greed and corruption shouldn't qualify as educational experience. 
Well, I don't know if it's educational experience or not. Like, that's not even the point, corporate greed or whatever. I don't want some stupid fucking kid working at a slaughterhouse because he's going to fuck himself up. And if he fucks himself up at the slaughterhouse and he cuts his finger off, then he's going to be getting disability from the government for the rest of his fucking life. Who pays for that? I do. I don't want to have to fucking pay for them but trying to save $17. No, I, I don't want to do it. It's and this is what and the meat prices go up too because then they sue the company and now your two dollar steaks are three twenty five. God damn, bro! Like I'm so sick of this stupid shit. Why is it that these fucking politicians are getting finessed for nothing? Drives me crazy. They're subsidizing bad corporate choices. Yes, that's exactly right. Yes, yeah, exactly. Educational experience, being taught corporations suck. I mean, they're ha I'm sure a lot of the kids, unironically, are probably happy to have a job. They, they want to be able to make their own money and, and do that. They probably want to have the job. Absolutely. But <coughs> it's just not good in the long term. It's not good in the long run. The solution should be automating the processes, subsidizing development for that automation, and then enabling companies to transition over to it with different types of government assistance. That should be what they're thinking about. But you want to know why they're not. It's because all the fucking people that you saw in that video, how many of them you think know how to use a, a smartphone? Uh-oh. How many of them you think know what a di uh, what a, what a fucking uh, uh, a VPN is? How many of them know what an IP address is? How many of them know uh, what the blockchain is? How many of them know what? Oh man, like let's see. I, I mean, like now we're getting into the negatives, aren't we? Yeah, it's it's a bad time. All of them? I don't think they do. I, I really don't. The smartphone? Yeah, they got no fucking idea, man. Uh, does TikTok use Wi-Fi? Yeah, like you saw what these people are. When when that TikTok hearing, those dumb fucks. Like, it, oh my God, I'm not even going to get into that. I feel like the, uh, the people should be able to have like a vote. Like every time that you have an election, there should be like a redo button. And if, if, the redo button gets like 20% of the vote, 10% of the vote. Both of the people can't run again, and the election is canceled. And it goes into some fucking, like, sudden death thing, and you have to pick up somebody else. Yeah, it stops the count. The world's on the brink of another giant industrial revolution uh, through the power of AI. Yeah, well, but while, meanwhile, these people are trying desperately to hold on to antiquated ideas from the 1800s. It's... Oh, God. Oh, God, bro. Like, I'm so tired of this shit. God damn. Who's my uh, idea? Politi politician gladiator fights in Congress? Every time I see somebody that gets in a fight in a Congress, like, this happens in Europe sometimes, I'm always like, yeah... All right, this guy's got skin in the game. You know, he, he's like, he's ready to actually fucking, he's ready to throw down for his people. You know what I mean? Anymore, those, yeah. Like, they used to hit each other with canes and shit. Whatever happened to that? Bring back canings. Yeah, he's fighting for his ideals. Oh, man, that sucks. You can't elect something that's predetermined. Well, stay woke, brother. Yeah, true, true, true. Every profession has some form of licensing. Have general knowledge. Test the politicians. Bro, there's no way. Like, I I just think a lot of these guys don't fucking know what's going on. I, I, I really do. It's sad.